Hey there, and thanks for checking out this video. So in my last episode, just to recap, some of the things that we did uh, was, was we put the P90 cavity here for the neck pickup. Uh, we drilled the holes to mount the bridge. Uh, we cut the notch for the adjustment for the heel uh, truss rod uh, in the neck. And we also cut our arm carved bevel here. In this video, we're going to prep and paint the body. But before we do that, or before we get started, I want to go ahead and mention something. One of the reasons I started this project is because I wanted to do something that nobody else was doing. Yesterday I saw a picture in my Facebook fade that made me think that I might be wrong. There was a picture of a guy holding the guitar that I'm trying to build right now. I thought, dang, maybe I'm not the only guy trying to build this guitar. But I read the article and it turns out the guy in the picture is Mike Lull, the guy who actually built the guitar for Eddie Vedder. And from reading the article, unfortunately it turns out that Mr. Lull just recently passed away. So it turns out this video series is not just to build a guitar that's a tribute to Eddie Vedder, but also a tribute to Mike Lull. Okay, before I get started, I want to take you through a couple of things I'm going to use to uh, prep the body here. Um, simple stuff, really. But... Uh, as I carved the arm carve here and made it um, uh, perfectly flat here, what I did is also I've created a hard edge um, on, the, on the end or the edge of, the, uh, of where I've sanded. So what I've got to do is I've got to get that turned over uh, to the same as the rest of the body. So I'll be doing some sanding around the edge here, then of course uh, taking it all uh, to a smoother state to prep for uh, accepting the paint. And uh, I'm gonna be using a 220 and taking it to 320. A Couple things I'll use for that. For the big flat parts in the front and back, I've got my random uh, orbital sander here um, with some 220 and some 320 paper, um, some various um, foam blocks to help me on uh, the flat pieces, if anything I need to do by hand. And importantly, what I've got is this uh, 220 and I've got it in 320 flexible sandpaper by 3M. Uh, which is great for on the curves here. And in my last video series on the parts cast, the Relic Stratocaster I made, you'll see how I took some of this um, foam pipe insulation material. And what I'm able to do is take my flexible 220 or 320, easily wrap around uh, this insulating material, and it's great for getting in the curves and getting inside here, inside the horns, uh, and being able to... to uh, 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 to sand there easily with a little bit of give, a little bit of flexibility, but also while maintaining some positive pressure around the corners without getting any flat spots induced. All right, so uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, what I wanna start with uh, is this just rough block here uh, to knock down the hard edges on my arm carve so I can get it prepped for actually um, getting it more rounded over. So I'm just gonna use this gently at first Maybe it's just going to put a, a little bit of a bevel on this edge. Um, this block is obviously nothing special. You can get it at any Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever it is. It just generally feels like, a, I don't even remember what it is, but it feels like maybe a, a hundred grit on the one side that I'm using right now. Just to take this hard edge off. And uh, with the, with the fact that it's got a little foam in there, I can push down and it'll give a little bit, which will help me um, actually to round it a little bit as well. So it really does a good job on this hard edge of bringing it in to the actual rounded over portions, but also giving it a rounded over feel as well. And normally that would be important on something that you're gonna paint because you don't wanna have a hard edge uh, where you're gonna paint and it's, a harder, it's a much harder for the paint to adhere to that sharp edge. In this case, as we know, since the guitar we're doing, this is gonna be an uh, unpainted edge. But even still, the pictures that I've seen definitely made it appear, uh, make it appear as it's, it's rounded over. So that's what I'm doing here.
that's pretty good. I think I'll go with that and then we'll see as we move along as I go through some of the other papers and the other grits and stuff if it needs anything else. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the uh, round over that it has right there right now. I think that's a, as good a place as any for us to go ahead and move on and, and keep going on with the rest of the guitar. probably noticed a few dark colored stripes on the body. When I first received it I didn't really notice them but as I began to prep the body they became more apparent. Upon closer inspection it looks like it's discoloration caused by some type of CA glue or something similar applied in order to stop what appears to be possible splitting in the wood along grain seams. I have been keeping my eye on them and I haven't seen any cracks developing. I suppose it should go without saying you get what you pay for. This body from Guitar Fetish was considerably less expensive than some Telecaster bodies available from other sellers. And to be honest, that's why I decided to go with them. To be fair, I'm pretty sure they advertise it as paint grade, meaning it's intended to be painted over. Otherwise, there were no other issues with it. So before we get started with painting, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about what uh, I'm actually using to finish this project. In my last uh, Relic Stratocaster build, I used all nitrocellulose lacquer. Um, kind of what I was going for anyway, which was a vintage guitar uh, look. So I used vintage paints um, and specifically nitrocellulose. This time, again, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to try some new things. Um, I was definitely interested in trying a new clear coat rather than the nitro clear, because uh, I just felt like from what I've read about the Eddie Vedder guitar and what I've seen about it, obviously it's heavily modded, um, and I don't think that black sparkle was a vintage finish, that it was probably refinished somewhere along the way, and, and probably when it was, it wasn't done with uh, nitrocellulose lacquer uh, as well. And I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, it sort of helps me with trying something different. So. What I did though, I did start um, with a white vinyl sealer, sealer that I got from Stumac. Same thing I used under my nitro on the other, um, used this as a base coat. Next, um, I used this Krylon Fusion all-in-one black, nothing special. Got it at Lowe's. I specifically got nothing special because I wanted to just try it doing inexpensive paints. Then uh, for my glitter, Krylon Glitter Blast starry night i actually got two different kinds of glitters and tested them out uh, to see which one sort of coated better which gave the best uh, uh, sparkling results and i chose this one of the two this is the krylon glitter blast also happy that it uh, was the same as the black fusion don't know if it made any difference or not that they were from the same manufacturer but i figured it couldn't hurt um, so we use that and then finally um, Spray Max 2K Clear Glamour. Now, this is something that I haven't ever used before. I've seen some things about it. Uh, watch uh, Brad Angove. He's got some great stuff on different spray can methods. Um, so this is something I wanted to try. So we're going to be using this. And, and lastly, my cheap uh, makes a spray rattle can, kind of like a paint gun handle here, attaches to any of these. Um, useful for helping to control your spray pattern and uh, just control the can. So that's what I'm going to use, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started and see how this thing turns out. Before I start putting my uh, uh, white vinyl sealer or like a primer on uh, here, what I'm going to do is uh, use a tack cloth and uh, get all the dust and any excess sawdust I didn't get off, get it cleaned up. All right, I'm satisfied. I got everything off of uh, any remaining dust. I got a little bit of stick them here on my hands from the tack cloth. What I'm going to do now is um, 
take some naphtha and clean off the surface and make sure there's not anything left from, uh, from the tack cloth on the wood itself and also get it off my hands, get some gloves on and uh, get ready to spray. Okay, well we've let it dry. Um, let's go check out and see what our results are. Very nice. Although I've got a little, I can see a little bit of, uh, you know, orange peel and whatnot. The uh, 2K finish looks pretty good, even just here. And I think you'll agree, the sparkle, um, the, from the glitter paint comes through nicely and hard and dry basically a 24 hour wait time hard and dry all right get this thing off and uh, get it ready for the next steps Okay, well that's going to be it for this video. Um, we're ready to, uh, to move on to the next part, which we'll do. We'll cover um, the, the finish uh, polishing and, uh, and buffing out. Um, we'll finish the installation of the parts and, and uh, work on the neck, uh, but we'll do that in the next videos. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, maybe leave some comments about uh, uh, how you think it's going, any recommendations, any uh, um, challenges or successes you've had using the paints that I used or the method or if you got any questions on how I got this sparkle um, go ahead drop it in there but like I said if you uh, if you enjoyed it give me a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video thanks